Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, that, that's okay. A um, couple reasons why I'm here. I thought it'd be kind of neat to do a TED Talk because I knew I, someone said that TED actually might be here. Mr. McPherson, is TED here today? He's here. Good. Um, another thing is, is I'm quite worried about you guys as, as, as a group. I'm worried about everybody. And it, and it gives me a chance right now just to get something off my chest. Now, what uh, precipitated the idea to do a talk like this is just simply a U2 song. And what had happened is I was just sitting there listening to it, and it, it said this here. It says, when you look at the world, what is it that you see? There are, people see all kinds of things that bring them to your knees. Now, what do you see when you look at the world? Do you see um, all sorts of metal and steel and glass all put together? I don't know. But what I'm going to do right now is before I came into the theater, or before you guys got to the theater here, I went to every single seat and installed an imaginator. So just pull that out and under your seat right now. Kind of looks like this. Mine's different. It's got stripes on it. It's a teacher's edition. And just put it on. Okay, just put it on. Not just the cool kids, everybody. There we go. Now turn it on. Now what do you see when you, when you look at the world? Again, do you see a, a melee of greens and browns? Or do you see just constant uh, metals and, and, and all sorts of things like that. So I want you to think about that. Now, this picture right here is a nice juxtaposition. It shows you that there's a kid on a swing looking at a TV, and of course there's a bird, which makes it even better. But it just brings to light that we are now in an era called the Anthropocene, which means it's the age of humankind, and we are making a not very good shape of the planet as we speak. And the other thing we're getting into now is the digital age. Now, Grant mentioned this just a couple minutes before. We're relying almost exclusively now on digital things and devices and seeing the world through LCD screens, which, which doesn't do a lot for your health. Now, the term wellness here, which I will use, is not simply a, a lack of disease or an absence of disease, but it's a state of mind. Are you, are you functioning well? Are you able to look at things and make sense of it? Are you, are you confident? Are you able to deal with stress? Do you have a sense of, of place on the earth? Now, it's that rapid disconnection that we have with, with, with nature and everything else that I'm really concerned about, and that's what I'm going to talk about. There we go. Now, um, Gardner, one of the Harvard University professors uh, years ago, okay. there we go. Here's a picture of the earth, guys. We belong here. It's in our DNA. The earth binds us to her. Ecology connects us with everything else. And as you can see, it, what's, it's the gravity of the situation here. Gravity, earth. I'll have to work on that one. <laughs> uh, Gardner came with an idea of multiple intelligences. Now have a look here. Now use my good uh, pointer here. And you can see at some point you guys can probably figure out where you sit on this multiple intelligences. Now I, for one, I have no intelligence whatsoever with music and rhythm, which you might see later on, but everybody has something here and which makes them intelligent. Now in late 1989, he added naturalistic. Now he added this thing where people who have a natural instinct to make connections, to interpret the world, the natural world, is one of these intelligences. And it's, it's all deep in our DNA. So imagine if you were sitting in the plains of, of Africa 10,000 generations ago, and you were able to interpret, well, the rainy season, what that brought, and interpret what to eat and what not to eat. It would be a good thing to have, and certainly that would be uh, brought down through uh, evolution um, to help you on your way. Now, the problem with the digital age is that we are having a very difficult time adapting to our digital experience. Now, as I said, there's over 400,000 years of evolution that have occurred with, with humans. And over that time, we've adapted nicely to this nice environment. But now we're, we're switching. We're now removing ourselves from the natural environment, and we're putting ourselves into the digital age, which is, again, not a, not a great thing to have. Now, there are several different ideas backed by science. Now, this is a bit of psychology here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about psychology, if you don't mind. Thank you. Now, biophilia, you break that down, it breaks up into two different words, bios meaning life and philia meaning life. So everybody, every human, has this innate desire to connect with life. Think of puppies and kittens and, and whales and, and, and spy, spiders? Well, you get the point. Everybody has a connection in some shape or form to here. And it's that lack of biophilia which is causing a lot of problems. 
Now the second sort of sciencey thing here, and of course I'm wearing my science jacket so it helps to make me more believable, but we look at attention. Everybody's got attention, right? And we have two types of attention here. Now Kaplan and Kaplan, 1989, came up with this idea that human beings have an attention center in their brain. Now it's challenged every day by something called hard fascination or direct attention. Also, it's also challenged by soft fascination or indirect attention. Now every day in class, we look at direct attention. You are focusing on things. Um, your, your, your brain is, is dedicated to one particular structure, one particular function. And as a result, um, oftentimes that brain or that attention center can get fatigued. And it's the indirect or the soft fascination or things, imagine if it's more of a, a, a gentle tug as opposed to a giant pull, which the direct fascination has. Now if you exhaust this right here, the indirect fascination or the uh, soft fascination will, will bring that back up. So just imagine a, a vessel being refilled again with attentionness. And the last one here is another bit of psychology, but it's a stress recovery theory. And that suggests that the ancient brain, so the area of the brain which looks at emotions and um, thinking and olfaction, and the last one seems to make a lot of sense. <laughs> there we go. It's that deep ancient brain, guys, that, that if, if you can recover it, it allows you to be more alert for things such as this, which I could not bear to imagine if any of this happened to you. There, there we go. Now, the problems here, guys, is just simply life without nature. And I put that in brackets there because it's a problem, but I can break it down into several different problems. Now, author Richard Lowe in 2005 came up with this idea or a, a concept called nature deficit disorder. Now, it's not a bona fide psychological term, but at least it, it draws attention to the fact that we have problems with, with nature. At least we, we don't have nature in our lives anymore. And I think Grant mentioned a little bit about it, about uh, sensory deprivation. So we're almost relying, relying entirely on our phones to make communications here. And Richard Louv expressed that as cultural autism. So we're lacking face-to-face -face communication. We're lacking face-to-face -face contact with people. And what's really, or encouraging this problem is that parents and, and schools are so afraid to send kids out into the woods or send them in the environment because of various things might happen to them. And this, of course, will lead to increased incidences of anxiety and depression amongst people. And the last point here is the extinction of experience. And what that simply means is that if I was to pass down to my kids who don't like going in the forest that often, but that's okay. If I was to not pass that down to them, they wouldn't have any idea of what that experience is like. So if we extinct that experience, if we take that experience away from you guys, then that's going to lead to problems. Now, David Attenborough here, uh, he's a conservationist filmmaker and overall awesome guy. Now, I'll, I'll say what he says here. He says, no one will protect what they don't care about, and no one will care about what they've never experienced. So imagine this guy saying that to you, and it's true. So if we extinct that or extinct that experience for you guys, saving whales and saving dolphins and squirrels and things is not going to be as important to you because you don't have that experience that uh, other people like myself have had. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, there's a simple answer here and a simple solution. That simply is, is life with nature. So you get out there and you experience things. Now, simply going out for a walk in the woods, right? Now, I told myself I might look like a heel doing this, but, but it's good for the soul. <laughs> now, if you just go for a walk in the woods and take off your shoes, and of course you make sure you're not walking on glass or anything like that, but it's that connection here. Um, you touch the earth, you touch the ground with your bare feet, and what happens is electrons will come up. Here's the science, kids. Electrons will come. And if you got sore feet or sore whatever, electrons will come into your body, interact with um, the, oh, I forgot the name now, interact with the, I'll get to it in a minute, uh, free radicals, thank you, free radicals, and start to, the healing process. That's probably the first time I've ever talked about electrons in a positive fashion. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you just simply look outside, guys, it's just as good as, as going out for a walk. If you just look outside and look at something natural, it tends to um, invoke the same sort of uh, healing. Now, forest bathing. Now, I've got something here, and I was going to do something with it. Whee! Woo! Wow! I'm really branching out. <laughs> forest bathing. It's, it's a Japanese term. Uh, 
loosely translated to Shinren Ryoku. It's a Japanese term which literally means going into the forest. Now I just, I just smelled that branch and I did it for a reason because what it does is it releases that Christmas tree type smell and there's antimicrobial activities in here and it does lead to an increased sense of vitality amongst people. So the Japanese since the 80s have been going out into the woods and just forest bathing. So it's not, it's not this, but it's just actually going out there. I feel kind of washed up, but I'll just leave it at that. Um, so in terms of health and society benefits here, guys, you go out in the woods, you go out and look at the ocean from, our, from your rooms here, your blood pressure is going to go down. Your stress hormone, the cortisol is going to go down. You're going to get fit as you go outside anyway. Right? You just get outside. Um, now the next one here is, is social cohesion. And what does that mean? It means you go out there, you have friends, you, you meet family members, and you just have a good time. It's good for the social benefits. Uh, cognitive functioning, you can think better outside. Right? Instead of looking at something on YouTube to relax, go outside, have a look. You can recover from illness quicker. And there's cost savings for health, guys. Think about this, if you can just send somebody outside and get the same benefit of some medication or on top of that medication, then why not? It's free. And the last one here, guys, in this particular slide is birdsong. Now, I'll do an experiment here. No, it's not gonna work, try it again. Oh, there's a bird sound. Now, is everybody relaxed? Probably not, you know why? I should have sent a tweet. But birdsong is very important because <laughs> It's very important to, uh, to help us. And doctors in Scotland now have actually started prescribing people, just get outside, go take a hike. It'll make you feel better. And for, for you guys, from our standpoint as educators, um, we can see reduced stress happening here. Uh, we can see the alleviation of ADHD symptoms in kids who actually go outside and have a look. Um, rates of obesity, aggression in kids start to decrease once you get outside and have a look. Kids are, are better at self-regulation. You stick a kid outside on a, on a playground with metal and all that stuff and they go, oh yay! But you put them outside in a bunch of trees and they say, oh look, I can make a, a, a spaceship out of here and they can do all crazy things. It increases their ability to think. And the reasoning and awareness increases. And that last point, guys, is survival of experience. We can simply now pass that on. So they have that experience they can pass on to their, uh, their kids when they uh, get older. And lastly here is looking at urban design. So for people who want to get into urban design or to build better cities, let's put some trees in there. With increased greenery, you get a whole bunch of benefits. You get less heat stress, so less asphalt out there will make the, the city less, less hot, so you can reduce your impact of air conditioners and, and things of that nature. Um, pollutants, trees and plants naturally absorb pollutants, so we can get rid of that exposure. Uh, reduction of noise, uh, you, you line the highways with trees and you can reduce some of the noise that way, it makes it look a lot nicer too. Crime rates, weirdly enough, go down as well with an increased exposure to nature. And then again, with ther or sorry, therapeutic areas and hospitals, so hospices, even if you just open up the window and have a look outside, you're going to have that reduction in stress and increase in wellness. And of course, it's sustainable, right? It's cheap. It's very, very cheap. It's, it's out there. It's already there for us. So we have to have a paradigm shift, <laughs> right? So I, ma I made this myself, but it's a paradigm shift. As you can see, uh, we have to make a, a fundamental change to our lives. We have to increase our exposure to nature. We have to do it in, in whatever way it works for you. And that firstly starts off with digital detox, right? So digital detox, you take yourself away from your phone, you take yourself away from Netflix or what have you, and you go outside and have fun. Now I know Grant mentioned it here, and he talked about going out on a date. It, it can be an experience with other fruit as well, but if you just simply go outside and get away from your, from your phone, and experience nature, it's gonna make you a healthier person. Now, just to conclude here, um, what do I see when I look at the world? I simply see beauty, I see health, I see restoration. What do I see, or what do I want you to see when you look at the world? Well, that's all subjective for you to think out and figure out on your own. But with a little bit of audience help, and as I mentioned before, I have absolutely no ability, uh, musically speaking, but let's just let Mr. Louis Armstrong, finish it off here. And this is what I want you to see when you look at the world. I see trees of green. Everybody, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh yeah. <laughs>